On other occasions, they are varieties which can also be found in Asia or Australia, the two continents with which the islands of Indonesia came into contact. This is the case of the second largest bovine in the world, the Bangting. The Bangteng, weighing 900 kilos and almost two meters high, prefers the open spaces to the interior of the jungle. There they find pasture and have greater possibilities of detecting potential enemies. Their size is only surpassed by one other bovine, the Indian gar, which can weigh up to a ton and stand some 30 centimeters higher. Groups of Bantengs are composed of a number of females led by a dominant male who constantly watches over his harem. In the ancient past, they could be found throughout continental Southeast Asia. They were an important source of food for the local population and are today domesticated on some islands. The wild Banteng, however, has been hunted intensively and now only survives in Burma, Thailand, Borneo, and here in Java. Unlike man, few predators would even attempt to fell a prey of this size. Their main enemy lies hidden in the depths of the jungle where it's virtually invisible. It is the largest predator on the island, an animal feared and venerated by man since ancient times. The tiger. Today, the Banteng almost never comes in contact with the tiger. As a result of the intensive hunting they have been subjected to, the population has shrunk to such an extent that in Java, they are virtually certain to become extinct. The same threat hangs over the largest inhabitant of these jungles. It was precisely on this island, Java, that the first explorers found one of the most mysterious animals of the archipelago. The natives described it as a being of prehistoric appearance with a single horn like that of the legendary unicorn. The animal lived inside the jungle, which made it difficult to find. For a while, the only proof of its existence were the local stories, strange piles of excrement which appeared in different places within the jungle, and tracks which on occasions were seen on the wet ground beside vegetation which had clearly been bitten into. The mysterious animal did, however, eventually surface. The Javan rhinoceros is one of the rarest animals on Earth. It is slightly smaller than the Indian rhinoceros, and the female either has a very small horn or none at all. This has proven to be a blessing, as they are entirely without value for the poachers. Despite this, they are in serious danger. At present, Java has the greatest number, but even here there are only 50 individuals. The rhinoceros had barely stepped from the pages of legend when it became in danger of extinction. The rhinoceros is one of the species which arrived in the archipelago during the glaciations, then found themselves cut off. With the rise in sea level, only those animals or plants capable of crossing the water were able to reach the islands. One of these colonized the muds of the estuaries at the point where the fresh water of the rivers runs into the sea. 
These trees form an impenetrable maze of roots and trunks, an intermediate ecosystem which is neither land nor sea. Conditions here are not the most ideal. The mud is very acid, has little oxygen and extreme levels of salt. But the mangrove has a necessary mechanism to overcome these obstacles. It seeds. The seeds of the mangrove are not only faced with these problems, but must also struggle against tides and currents. In order to achieve this, they germinate on the tree itself and develop a stem of up to 40 centimeters long. Only then do they break off. If this liberation coincides with low tide, they will cling to the ground and be able to take root. From then on, the challenge will be to overcome the lack of oxygen. The trick is to grow long aerial roots or create vertical tubes, the pneumatophores, which rise up like small breathing pipes. This seed has fallen during high tide, but it will not die. Its mission is to float off in search of new territories to colonize. Below the mangroves, there lies another universe, a world which since ancient times has fascinated and terrified man. The shallowness of the water which made possible communication between these islands and the continent during the Pleistocene era now means the seabed is able to receive light and heat. The marine fauna and flora have here found conditions favorable to life, and a few places in the world can boast of such a profusion of forms. Here, a single bay may contain twice as many species as the entire Caribbean. In these submarine paradises, evolution has created beings so different from those of the surface that for many years scientists were at a loss to explain. This clownfish, for example, does not rub against a plant, but rather against an anemone, an animal of the polyp family. The anemone, with its stinging tentacles, protects the clownfish from its enemies. The fish, in return, cleans its protector of parasites. Long before science was able to study the symbiotic relationship between the clownfish and the anemone, the sea was, for man, a place of countless mysteries. Its depths were unreachable and its fauna in many cases unknown. The lack of scientific information was compensated for by the imagination of man, filling the ocean with marine unicorns, giant snakes, and mermaids. The stories told by the sailors passed from mouth to mouth, feeding people's imaginations, and given further credence by the numbers who died at sea each year. Some of the dangers lying hidden in the waters took the form of multicolored fish which possessed weapons capable of killing a man. The members of the Scorpanidae family have poisonous barbs on their fins to dissuade predators from any attempt to hunt them. Some of these species, such as the lionfish, are clearly visible, but others camouflage themselves, blending into the coral background. Anyone who makes the mistake of bumping into them will die in just a few hours, never having identified what it was that had attacked them.
On other occasions, the danger came from much more familiar animals, the snakes. Man's primeval fear of the snakes was immediately applied to its marine relatives, and in some cases, quite rightly so. The olive sea snake is not only swifter than any land serpent, but it also possesses the deadliest poison of any snake in the world. <laughs> 